All right. Well, today, I, uh, I thought I would share my vast knowledge of power cleans. Um, you know, of course, I'm being facetious. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say I have vast knowledge of anything. Uh, I think I, uh, I'm curious about a lot of things, and I try to find out what the essence of them are. But I got into power cleans. Uh, you know, pretty late in life, I was at uh, I was at a uh, Northeastern University, and there was a trainer there, an athletic trainer who uh, was a pretty uh, accomplished Olympic lifter. And he was just a little guy, but boy, he was powerful. His name was Les. I can't remember his last name, but he taught me quite a bit about Olympic lifting. And the one thing I want to start out with lifting, and this is my bar, by the way, because I'm not very strong anymore. So <clears throat> lifting weights is essentially working ag against gravity. Okay. Li the, 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 the word lift, okay, to me means directly against gravity, whereas flip, which is what, what I think we've, we've established as what we do in football, we're working somewhat against gravity, but gravity is working alongside of us, okay? In other words, the force that we're generating is influenced by gravity. It, gravity wants to pull you down, okay? And you want to push people this way or flip them or throw them, okay? And you can either enhance what you're doing with gravity or you can try to lift against gravity, which to me is not efficient. But weightlifting is all about going against gravity. And what, what I say to kids, you know, when I coach kids in, uh, in power cleans, I say, look, a, a clean, okay, and there's a difference, of course, between a power clean and a regular clean, okay? A power clean, you know, strictly speaking, is catching it high, Whereas a regular clean is squatting down to catch it, squatting down quite low if you're, if you're very flexible. But a clean is essentially a function of jumping, okay? So I say to kids, look, if you were going to jump up and, and go for a rebound, how, how wide would your feet be? And they, they, they invariably do this. They might stagger a little bit. Very seldom do they do that, okay? They put their feet inside their armpits and they jump. And I say, okay, great. If you were going to jump, that's where your feet would be. Now, if you were going to squat, where would your feet be? And they invariably do that. Okay. So I say all, all cleaning is, is jumping and squatting to catch. So your feet have to leave the ground. Okay. And I don't know if that's actually a power clean, but that's the way I teach it. Okay. Jump change your feet. Your feet have got to come off the ground. You've got to be able to move them and stick them. Okay. Now, cleaning to me and all lifting, especially lifting with your legs, it's not about co-contraction. Okay. Uh, I've been selling this co-contraction thing where your knees stay bent and you, you move your, your joints, your hip joints, but you don't extend your knees. Well, power cleaning is that I'm not sure I'm not sure if it really carries over as much as people think it does but the one thing I will say and, and a guy said this to me one time um, he said look cleans when you know you can clean 300 pounds you have a lot of confidence so it's a confidence builder it's also a hand strengthener and probably the best thing it does is the shoulder shrug because the clean part of the clean your, your arms are supposed to be like ropes and the clean is a function of jumping and shrugging okay and you don't want to bounce the bar away out here you want to keep your elbows in keep the the bar as close to your body as possible because you want the bar to travel in a straight line you don't want it swinging out okay it pulls you off balance you want to travel in a straight line. So it's an elbows out function, okay, with a shrug. The elbows, the pulling part of the arms, it really, what you're trying to get the bar to do is float. Okay, you're going to get it to, you're pulling it up as high as you can. You're going to get it to float. And 
And when it floats momentarily, that's when you can move your feet. That's why I'm always at, our, at odds with people that say hop. Okay, well, if, if you can get that much inertia, okay, excuse me, if you can get that much momentum going on a guy that you can move your feet, I get the hop, okay? Or if you're if you're sagging and giving ground, okay, I get the hop. But if you have a load, if you're under a load and you decide that you're gonna move your feet while the, while the load's hanging on you, you're gonna fall, okay? So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Okay, you've gotta get the bar to float before you squat under it and catch it. And of course, the catch function is all about flexibility. Okay, now to get an easier catch you want to catch the bar on your shoulders okay you don't want to be you don't want to catch the bar in your hands and you can see that I haven't warmed up yet but you've got to get enough flexibility one of the tricks is to spread your hands a little bit to take a little pressure off your elbows I don't particularly think that power cleaning is any any better than, than power snatching where you don't have to get, you don't have to worry about that function of catching because you catch the bar over your head. And a friend of mine, David Feely, who's probably one of the best strength coaches I've ever been around, I think he concurs with me. He he decided one day to just start teaching snatches. Okay, you use a lighter weight. It's a little bit different technique. It's not any more or any less technique. It's not any, any more or less dangerous, and you just throw the bar away if you lose it, or you step away from it, okay? Whereas a power clean, you can really jam up your wrists and elbows. Okay, now, the other part of the clean that I want to straighten out for people is this. Basically, when you're coming from the ground, what you're talking about is a deadlift, and what you want to do is get your knees out of the way, then scoop your knees and jump. Okay, so watch me from the side, okay? I start with my bar against the shins. I want to get a good posture. What I just recently learned was the best way to get posture is to tuck your chin. Guys, just say pin your ears back. What you want to do is tuck your chin. That locks out your back and gets you into the low position. And you don't want, you don't want the bar way out here because now you're going to swing it plus it puts your back at a mechanical disadvantage. Your back right here is a class three lever. There's nothing you can do about that. Okay, so once again, you know, my, my big buzzword is hip abduction. When you turn your, your toes out, not only does it widen, not only does it widen your base, okay, because look at that, my base right here is about a foot, and I turn my toes out and it's about two feet. If I spread it out a little bit more, it's about two and a half feet. Now, I don't want to be real spread because I wouldn't jump this way. So I want to get into a jumping position with my toes out. And what that does, when you bend, okay, when my toe's in, the bar wants to go forward. When my toe's out, it comes closer. You can see that right here, okay? The lower I go with my toes straight ahead, the further away from the bar, uh, the bar is from my feet, whereas when I turn my, abduct my hips, the bar gets closer to my feet. In order to lift, the bar has to be over your feet. Guys, don't, don't, I mean, don't even think about it. It's physics. It's nothing you can do about it, okay? And again, what you want to do is basically keep your back level, okay, get your good, and I used to say to kids, oh, look up. No, I think now what I would coach is this. Find a spot on the ground with your chin tucked and then find the spot in the air. But don't move your head and try to keep your back locked in. Okay, and what you wanna do is move, push your feet through the ground, move your knees out of the way, get into the power position. This is the power position. Okay, then scoop the bar to keep your knees, keep, keep the bar close to your thighs so it's close to your center of a force, okay, your force line, okay, and your force line should look something like that with a little hook on the end. So you, you scoop and jump. Okay, now, here's the big argument. Should we clean from the floor, or should we clean from blocks, or should we clean from a hang? I, I don't think it matters. I think that from the floor, 
is a little bit more dangerous and it puts a little bit more pressure on your on your flexibility or lack of it. Okay, the Japanese used to used to use a frog style because of their they're, they're so adept at the hip abduction, but they're not real good at the internal rotation. Okay, I think that if you, if you get the bar off the ground enough to where you're sure that your, your uh, lifter's got good posture, in other words, you don't want to be like this, get it up off the ground. I would say that, that either below the knee or above the knee cleans, a combination of the two would be pretty good. I, I don't know if you need it from the floor, I think you can get the same comp component from just doing deadlifts, okay? Just deadlifts, okay? Uh, without, without, you could use more weight than you could ever clean, and there's less of a chance of injury, and it's less technically demanding. So from the blocks or from a hang, from the blocks, I wouldn't hang from below the knees. I would either hang, I'd hang from above the knees, or I'd rest on the blocks. Push your knees out of the way, keeping the bar close to you, slide it up, jump, shrug, catch. Of course, you want to catch here. And this is why the, the snatch is a little bit easier on the, on the lack of flexibility of the upper body. And of course, when you stick, when you jump, you want to jump, you don't want to jump back. You want to jump under the bar. You want to get you want to get your feet under the bar, okay? Otherwise, you're, you're off balance, and it's all about stability. Now, as far as lowering the bar and throwing it on the ground, you know, there's all these safety components. First thing I would say to you is you don't need to power clean. You can just jump up on stairs or boxes or whatever and get the jumping component. It, power means strength plus speed, okay? In other words, you are you got a, an engine, like a four-cylinder tractor engine with about 90 horsepower. It can move, it pulls trees out of the ground because of the transmission. The transmission allows it to use levers to augment the strength of that engine, but you lose speed when you lose lever, when you use levers. Okay, depending on how you lose them. Sometimes you gain speed, like a fishing pole. But I don't want to get into all that. Okay, what, what you have to understand is that the theory behind the power clean is power, which means strength plus speed. How fast are you going to move this weight? Okay, and uh, Dave Feely, once again, uh, had Johnny Parker come and visit us. Johnny Parker visited this guy twice. Dave Feely's at Temple. Okay, he's one of the best, he's probably the best coach I know in any, any discipline. He could probably coach anything. And he is a, uh, he's a pretty well, he's, he's a smart dude. And anyway, Johnny Parker, the famous Johnny Parker came to visit him twice. I, I went and I got to go out to dinner with Johnny Parker, nice guy. Um, I don't know why uh, he chose Dave, but I think I do, because Dave's really a smart dude. But anyway, he said, don't, Johnny Parker now, said, don't worry about lifting weights, adding weight, adding weight, adding weight. You get to a weight that you kind of like, and you know, you, you don't want to get into, add speed, okay? So, you know, guys, guys are doing squats, and they're, they're trying to put 700 pounds on the bar. Well, there's a lot of strain there. What he said was just go, go a little faster, okay? Train your guys to go a little faster. Well, that faster is power. Okay, that's power. Power is strong movements fast. How fast can you go? Okay, now, football, of course, is a power sport, but it's also a strength sport. It's also a stability sport. It's also, a, so power is not the only thing that you want to deal with. Okay, but anyway, I'm getting into science stuff, and I, you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm kind of a mechanic, and that's, you know, probably saying stuff that isn't quite 100% correct. I don't want to. But this, again, what, what I would say, getting to a jumping position, okay? If you're cleaning, I think a narrower, the narrow, uh, and also, oh, here's another thing. Don't let the bar hang on your fingers. Roll, roll your wrists so that your knuckles are pointed straight down. I used to say, this is a bird and this is a hawk. 
Okay, so grab the bar with talons, get it below the knees somewhere, or, or if you're doing hand clinch, get it above the knees so you've already scooped it. Okay, learn how to pull and get your knees out of the way, keep the bar close, scoop, jump and shrug, squat and catch. Okay, it's not much to it. It's not a, it's not a panacea, it's not a, it's a good exercise. Guys get, they get so caught up in it. And, you know, I used to say, well, you, you get a kid for four years, you finally teach him how to clean and then he graduates. But that's, you, you know, if you just concentrate on those, those components, okay, jump, shrug, squat and catch. And notice when I, I stick my feet in the ground, okay, very similar to Shiko's, okay. And I kind of like the Shiko's for, for a lot of reasons, but I'm not going to talk about Shiko's anymore. Anyway, that's what I know about power cleans. I don't know if it'll help you. It'll at least give you some food for thought. And hey, Ohio State looked pretty good last night, huh? All right. Oh, these are my uh, Christmas jammies, and this is my this is my Lewisburg colors right here. Okay, Lewisburg College, the Hurricanes. Thanks. Bye.